Here we talk the anatomy of the circulatory system of the arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. If you're a pro at this, by all means, feel free to fast forward. It is mostly going to be review in terms of anatomy. There are a couple of things I want to focus on or, or point out in terms of their their importance in the function of the cardiovascular system. As we look at the anatomy of the arteries, for example, we're going to note that there are two main different classifications of arteries. We have our elastic arteries and our muscular arteries. And of course, there's a gradient or a range in there with some arteries having more elastic process, pro, uh, properties, whereas some having less. The elasticity of the arteries those that are elastic, is important for creating what we call a pressure reservoir. The way that this works is that as, if you consider an artery, let's say in its relaxed state, so it's relaxed state, let's just say it looks something like this. And then as blood is forced into that artery, that's going to push against the elastic fibers of the artery causing it to move into the next state, which is the stretched out or um, state where it's expanded. It's a, the elastic fibers have allowed this to stretch as blood pushes against the artery wall. The thing about these elastic fibers though is if you imagine the pressure from let's, the heart pushing against, pushing the blood into the artery, uh, expands the artery, the elastic arteries expand, uh, imagine that like coiling a spring or, or compressing a spring. As soon as that pressure is released, that spring's going to recoil, and that's what happens with these elastic fibers. And what the recoil does is it acts as a second pump of sorts to help to push the blood further along through the circulatory system. In essence, what's happening is as the artery fills with blood and the artery elastic fibers stretch, we're really storing potential energy. And then when the uh, pressure is relieved, even just a little bit, that potential energy is turned into kinetic energy that drives the blood forward through the circulatory system. The muscular arteries don't do this as much. They are um, strong so that they can handle the pressure generated by the blood, but um, by blood pressure, but they don't have quite as much recoil. Then if we look at the arterioles, we've talked a little bit about these in class, especially as we talked about the autonomic nervous system in terms of how these regulate blood flow. The arterioles are primarily about regulating vasodilation, vasoconstriction. When the smooth muscles constrict, that leads to vasoconstriction. which in turn leads to uh, decreased blood flow. I'm just going to write flow for short. And so that occurs due to these smooth muscles. And you can see these, these fibers here. These are my smooth muscles here. And not shown, of course, but we would have uh, predominantly, with, with the exception of a few arterioles found in the um, digestive system, um, most arterioles here are going to be regulated by the sympathetic nervous system and so we would have sympathetic nerve fibers uh, innervating these smooth muscles and just as a brief reminder if those sympathetic nerve fibers release norepinephrine um, onto let's say a alpha adrenergic, an alpha 1 adrenergic receptor you'll remember that that is going to then lead to vasoconstriction. That causes the constriction um, of those, or the contraction of those um, smooth muscles, and so that equals vasoconstriction. On the other hand, recall, just again as a reminder, we discussed this in more detail in the parasympathetic nervous system, sorry, in the sympathetic nervous system, autonomic nervous system, um, that if we have epinephrine or epi or norepi binding to instead of an alpha 1, by the way, epinephrine can bind to an alpha 1 too, but the effect is the same. Epinephrine, norepinephrine binding to alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction, norepinephrine, epinephrine binding to a beta 
2, for example, causes dilation, vasodilation. It causes the uh, smooth muscles to relax, and so then we get the dilation. So just as a reminder, and that's where the arterioles really shine, is that they're really going to regulate blood flow through um, partnership with the sympathetic nervous system to coordinate how much blood is reaching the tissues, the skeletal muscle tissues, the digestive system, wherever it is that it happens to be, we happen to be sending blood. So we'll see these arterioles uh, as great importance throughout the circulatory system. We'll see them again. We're going to talk about them again in the renal system the respiratory system, and so forth. They're really quite important in terms of regulating blood flow. Um, I apologize. I kind of talked about everything right here on this slide, and rather than redo this video, I'm just going to kind of say, hey, wait, we talked about elastic arteries here. This slide is supposed to be talking about muscular arteries. Um, I do want to point out a, a word that I, I didn't focus much on, but it's this idea of resistance. We're going to talk about two different terms, compliance, And that refers to how elastic something is, how much it stretches, versus resistance, which is not quite the opposite of compliance, but it's the basic idea is that we're going to resist force, we're going to um, not stretch quite as much, and so the muscular arteries don't really stretch out the way that the elastic arteries do. And then here's the arteries, arterioles of note, these are smaller vessels, 20 to 30 micrometers in diameter. For reference, capillaries can be oh, 7 micrometers. I think they can be as small as 3 micrometers for the capillaries. So these are certainly larger than that, and they create quite a bit of resistance. Their job is not really to stretch. Instead, if, if you look at them, they're mostly smooth muscles, and, and that really kind of highlights their job. Those smooth muscles are to contract or relax to regulate the amount of resistance. The more narrow, so narrow artery arterioles equals more resistance. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a little bit, in a little while, um, but I want to kind of set that stage right now.